he had uh, other academic work commitments uh, today, but uh, he uh, says hello to everybody and wishes uh, us uh, a very pleasant uh, seminar and uh, all the best to, uh, to Shakofa as uh, a, welcoming, uh, a welcoming sign. Uh, before talking uh, to um, uh, Shakofa and listening uh, to her uh, uh, presentation, I give the floor to uh, Professor Marcella Costa that is here sitting beside me. Marcella Costa is uh, uh, the Vice Rector for International Education, International uh, Teaching here uh, in, uh, at the University of Turin. Thank you very much, Marcella, for being with us today. Thank you, Federico. Thank you to uh, Simona Tagliani, who is um, online with us, and also to Sakofa Baraski for uh, giving uh, her maybe first presentation uh, in uh, the University of Torino. I am here. I am a professor of German linguistics at the, the Department of Languages here at the University of Torino. And uh, at, at this moment, I am also vice rector for international education. And in this role, I would like to uh, give you um, a welcome address also from our rector, Professor Genoa. G Genoa. Sorry. I, I I I have um, J Professor Jeuna, and uh, I would also like to uh, give you some information about this initiative who uh, helped us to to brought uh, uh, Shakofa Baraski here in Torino. I am sure that uh, Professor Tagliani will add on this, but I would like to present you shortly, briefly the initiative we took uh, or the action we we took uh, um, in september initiated in september in order to uh, give a, a sort of a contribution to the uh, to support afghan scholars and students um, you know in, during the, the terrible crisis started in uh, the middle of uh, August. Um, the University of Torino decided, together with other universities in Italy, to uh, give uh, a concrete support to scholars and students fleeing from Afghanistan, and decided, first of all, to set up some actions in order to um, invite uh, scholars and researchers like uh, Shakofa Baratsky, but other colleagues are coming very soon, uh, and this is, a, of course, very important to us. There are other scholars in, uh, uh, for instance, at the University of Scienze Gastronomiche, coming from uh, Afghanistan uh, uh, after uh, August 15th. And so this is the first very important action, which is also in inscribed in uh, 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 an overall strategy of uh, inclusion and uh, Refugee welcome. The University of Torino uh, is going to implement in the next years. The other uh, action uh, I would like to address uh, very briefly uh, today is uh, the the action in favor of uh, Afghan students. We could uh, have the possibility to give uh, ten scholarships to Afghanistan students um, who flown from. Uh, Afghanistan after the 15th of August, and we are now in these days um, welcoming the students and in helping them to get acquainted with the um, academic system in Italy and also with, the first, uh, with the, their first contact with uh, the University of Torino. So these are just two actions, initiatives uh, um, on the path towards uh, um, an inclusive, uh, university. Another very important step, which was uh, made right today, is the um, the um, uh, the call for uh, the so-called Unicore project, which is the um, the corridor for uh, universitary refugees, uh, which opened today, and uh, this will bring the University of Torino to have other two refugee students next year um, studying with us at the University of Torino. Um, so I would stop here. Thank you very much for organizing organizing this uh, lecture, and uh, I wish uh, Shakofa Baratsky and all your family a very wonderful stay with us in Torino. Hoping for the best.
for your service. is not here. Sorry, yes. I also have to add that our head of the International Relations Office, Emanuela Barbero, who was in the program, has another commitment in uh, the rectorate, but she is also, of course, uh, fully on board on these actions, and she and the uh, uh, officers from the international office support, uh, supported and support uh, regularly on a daily basis, let's say, the the initiatives on the side of the refugee students and on the school of the scholars. So thank you again, also from, on behalf of Emanuela Barbero. Thank you very much, Marcella. It was a pleasure for us uh, to have you here. And uh, as I was mentioning uh, at the very beginning, uh, uh, Simona Tagliani is uh, the organizer of this uh, of this uh, um, seminar, uh, and uh, she was uh, really in charge uh, of uh, um, Shakofa's uh, journey from Afghanistan. So I think uh, I will leave uh, now the floor to Simona Tagliani. Simona is uh, our president of the degree course in intercultural communication and she's an anthropologist as many of you know simona thanks hi. Uh, thanks federico can you listen to me do you yes hear me? Perf yes perfectly yes <laughs> so uh, thanks to all of you thanks uh, to professor Costa. Sorry, there is a strange of the voice. So I don't know if you can close your audio for just a few minutes. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I would like to welcome everybody today, and it's a great pleasure to have uh, Shakofa Baraksi with us uh, to share her, her research and uh, reviews uh, work. And we hope that uh, this research may continue today and the scholarship received by the University of Turin really can help to improve her uh, speech works in the future. Uh, sorry, there is also always the echo of my voice. So sorry if I am a little bit uh, disturbed by it. Actually, our audio is off now. Okay, so... Okay, I do by myself because I am the organizer of the meeting and I closed uh, the clay in Audi one, then I will open again. Is it good for you? Okay. So let me just uh, um, start in Italian for a few seconds and I will switch on English uh, as uh, soon as possible. But I would like to greetings uh, our students in Italian. Uh, benvenuti alle matricole, non solo, a studenti e studentesse del corso di comunicazione interculturale. È un piacere poter inaugurare il uh, corso uh, con una lezione inauguralis che va in continuità uh, con uh, i desideri che anche le presidenze che ci hanno preceduto avevano avuto negli anni ma eh, per eh, i problemi legati soprattutto ai lockdown e al covid non era stato ancora possibile organizzare un evento simile. È un grande piacere poterlo organizzare proprio in questa concomitanza eh, fortunata eh, e cioè di avere una inauguralis del corso di comunicazione interculturale con la presenza di Shakofa Baraxi. Io eh, spero che... Eh, eh, insieme ovviamente a tutto il corpo docente e al, ai seminari a cui eh, potete partecipare nel corso del vostro lungo percorso formativo abbiate modo di capire quanto il taglio dato al corso di una eh, disciplina plurale quale quella delle scienze sociali pensata in un'ottica fin dall'inizio interdisciplinare sia oggi l'unica risorsa che abbiamo a disposizione per comprendere un mondo che si va facendo via via sempre più complesso e per certi aspetti eh, drammaticamente tragico. I switch again on the English and uh, uh, I just want to mark two points uh, before giving the voice to Shakofa. Uh, when, when something like that happened in life, uh, it cannot be the effort of a single individual. What's happened in the possibility that the University of Turin open its uh, uh, space to uh, uh, scholarship thought for 
a, a scholar at risk, um, it's a, it means that it was a big effort made by several people. And uh, Professoressa Costa has yet remember the engagement of the rectorate in giving support uh, suddenly uh, to the request that arrived the 15th of October 2021 when Shakofa for the first time has written an email, a message on the um, mentorship uh, email address. She was asking for a support. She was asking for a help. She was asking as a, a researcher and a professor that someone can listen to her voice and give her a new opportunity to improve elsewhere her works, research and uh, engagement in academic and uh, extra academic life. Um, of course, uh, uh, as Professor Esas Costa has underlined, the rectorate was uh, the first actor of this uh, effort and possibility. At the time, uh, there were uh, uh, Tiziana Maccario and today, Dr. Esa Barbero support the initiative. But uh, uh, let me uh, acknowledge today uh, some colleagues who in the Department of Cultural Politics and Society, with us, I mean with uh, our Dean, uh, uh, head of department, and uh, all the staff of professor was, were so important to let us open the scholarship, make um, the um, evaluation possible, and help in the process of uh, uh, organize the trip. These uh, people are um, in the administrative side of the department, uh, and uh, I would like to thank them, uh, in particular, Laura Cereia, Cinzia Roselli, and Anna Rita Letizia. And thanks to them, all the staff that work inside their office, because without this administrative support, even with uh, the strong engagement of the university, uh, as we know in the academic institute, nothing can really move and happen. And uh, last uh, acknowledgement, uh, uh, concern an uh, international uh, landscape, because if uh, um, this uh, invitation um, uh, was really possible, and uh, as it is, Shakofa is today with us in Turin, is also thanks to Ruth Harvey and Linda Meyers uh, from Australia and the United States. They support us. Um, meanwhile, the project of the scholarship uh, was uh, in uh, develop. After this moment of acknowledgement, uh, and of course, I would like really to thank the presence also of uh, Kearanang Sadat, sorry for my bad pronunciation, Lida Kreami, Husna Raufi, and Batul Eyadari, that uh, with Shakofa today, uh, we talk about uh, the condition of the woman in uh, Afghanistan in the past and in the present day. Uh, I would like just to conclude my quick presentation remembering that talking about the condition of uh, the woman, and uh, it's uh, a word that we have always to think uh, plural and complex, uh, means to uh, have a great opportunity today. Because thinking up, think about the condition of women in the world, in Afghanistan, in Italy, or elsewhere, means to reflect to a process of invention, how to invent a woman today able to be ready to uh, answer to the challenges of our policy, of our cultures, of our transformation society. So this is a great opportunity for all of us and for our students, because thinking at the condition of the woman today means to think to the invention of a modernity without having uh, stereotypes or expectation based uh, on uh, tradition or past and be in the flu of history. 
So I would like to think with you today at the woman, not as a subject that is yet constructed, but as a, a subject who needs to be invented several times to uh, conceive and achieve the goal of emancipation, autonomy, liberation, and freedom. Thanks to Shakova, we listen to you very carefully now, and uh, I uh, let Federico present uh, briefly your biography and then uh, listen to you with great expectation. Thanks. Solo un attimo Federico perché non vi ascoltiamo adesso. Secondo. Puoi, puoi vedere se riesci a aprire l'audio? Aspetta un attimo perché... Perfetto, adesso ti risentiamo. Ma Eh, Federico, non so se in aula avete due computer aperti perché c'è qualcosa che continua a fare eco e noi non vi sentiamo. Mira, ah, quello. Non mi interessa quasi. Se volete togliere l'audio, toglietelo da qui. Ah, ok. Ah, ok. Molto bene. Ok, quindi Ok. Ok, I think we solved it now. Can you hear us properly? Ok, sorry about this. It was a technical problem yeah. I wasn't aware of. Ok, wonderful. So, uh, we can share Shakofa's presentation. Just move if you want to present. Yeah. Okay. So, as uh, I was briefly introducing before, at the very beginning, Shakofa Baraksky is a PhD scholar of political sciences. She has a master in public policy and administration. She is a civil society activist and a permanent member of the Loya Girga on behalf of women a volunteer member of C4A, DHSC, and STO, and professor at private universities. She is also an expert of uh, social sciences uh, at the Scientific Research Center of Herat University, and she has been a civil society activist in various fields, defending human rights, women's rights, uh, and working for peace in Herat city. Now, as we were mentioning before, she's a research fellow 
within the mentorship project here at Turin University. And we are, of course, very happy to have her. Today, the title of her, of her presentation is Afghan Women on the Path of History, 1919-2021. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, hello, everyone. Ciao tutti. Uh, I'm Shakufa Baragze from Afghanistan. As uh, they mentioned, I had many uh, opportunities in Afghanistan, but unfortunately, in August, I lost everything in Afghanistan and I uh, had to leave my country and came to Pakistan. Before I start my speech, um, I am really grateful to my colleagues at uh, Torino University. They work hard to getting me back to academia or academic environment. That was my dream from childhood. Uh, and also I had some friends, they are out of the university. They work hard for me, like Linda is in America and uh, Ruth is in uh, uh, Australia because my situation was so uh, danger in Pakistan for four months. In, sometimes it's uh, said that when you have some friends in the hard situation, they help you. They will be uh, a part of your sweet memorization in all the world, all the time. Uh, and uh, uh, thanks for um, coming today. And uh, I hope we will have a, a good time together. I will share some uh, events or some facts about the uh, history of Afghanistan, especially the history of women in a historical period of Afghanistan for one century, from 1919 until uh, 2001. Why I have selected this period? Because we had a, a start, a good start of the golden period in 1919. In the first time when uh, theory of feminism or uh, uh, implemented in Afghanistan. By one patriotic person, we had a leader by the name of King Amanullah, and also uh, his uh, wife was with him, Malika Suraya. Both of them tried to, to change the society because uh, our society before, it was a close uh, um, um, society, close cultural society. They never uh, can accept uh, the participation of a woman in the society, especially in politics. So it was a good uh, moment for one decade. We had a golden period for women. It was one century before, but now we don't have. Why? Who is responsible for this? Today you will know who is responsible for this uh, period. As I mentioned in the poster, mostly our dreams, our aspirations were a topic of negotiations around the world. Even if America or US or uh, UN or uh, Europe decided to do something for Afghanistan, they, their focus were on the topic of women's rights. But now all of them are silent, why? I don't know, it was uh, some threat for them in Afghanistan. They selected our dreams to, to deal in their negotiations, just it, it was that and finished now. In 1919, it was the, sorry if I, I cannot control myself sometimes because, uh, you know, my situation, uh, so uh, apologize if sometimes I tell something. Uh, uh, in, in 1919, the golden period was, why? Because in the first time, the King Amanullah uh, decided to involve women in the society. For the first time, he adopted the constitution for Afghanistan. It means the first constitution of Afghanistan adopted in 1923 by King Amanullah. And why he, he, he decided to uh, authorize the policies or reforms, uh, the changing that will, what is the problem? Non so come spostare la telecamera, sorry. Yeah, no, non lo vediamo, capisci? Perché è quel, coso, è quel dispositivo lì, non è il Webex. Quello mm -hmm. Webex l'ho già trascinato. Sorry, uh, no problem. There is just one uh, dot. Uh, yeah, move it. Because that's the camera that is uh, recording us. So if we move the camera, then we won't be recorded. So I don't know what to do with that because it's here actually. 
So you can actually consider that this is not readable, but you can. Yeah, I will explain. If yeah. uh, we will have, a, I will explain briefly one century the situation of women in Afghanistan. After that, we will have a season of uh, discussion. We, you can ask something. If it is not clear, I will make clear, because it is not possible to. Uh, explain all the things in details in in short time. We will have time. We will explain all the things, and uh, if you need some uh, more information, I will share it uh, later with you. Uh, okay, this period was a golden period for one decade in Afghanistan, from 1919 until uh, 1929, and the leader of Afghanistan was King Amanullah, and uh, his um, wife uh, Malika Suraya was with him. For the first time, they adopted the constitution of Afghanistan, and also they tried to implement the uh, feminism theory in Afghanistan. Uh, first of all, uh, they had many uh, reforms or uh, plan for, uh, for the improvement uh, of Afghanistan, but uh, the most important thing that our focus is on the women, it was the uh, um, opening or establish some schools for the girls for the first time in Afghanistan. And also, they uh, sent some girls for to the Europe, uh, Turkey, for uh, studying. Uh, and um, uh, it, for the first time, they found um, a magazine special for women by the leading of uh, 12 women in Afghanistan by the name of uh, Irshad Neswan. And uh, also, uh, they they work. Um, they had uh, some uh, other reforms like uh, freedom of speech, freedom of association. It means freedom were uh, implemented in Afghanistan in in this period. But uh, the most important thing uh, was that um, the reforms was uh, suddenly. It means when King um, had a, a, um, a trip and uh, turned back to Afghanistan, he decided to. Um, change something in the society. Uh, so uh, another important reform that he had, it was about the judiciary system. In judiciary system, he announced that after this, uh, no one without education can be in charge of the court or judicial system. Because before this, the um, religious scholars or uh, mullahs were in charge of the court. So. They tried to, to find a, um, a place for them in the society because they lose their power. They were searching for some opportunity. And also, uh, another uh, point was that the um, Britain um, Empire was in Pakistan, uh, inside of Pakistan, and uh, other side of the Dural Line, because uh, on that time, Pakistan was under the control of UK or Britain. So they were searching for some opportunity like this. What happened? This group of uh, religious uh, leaders tried to, to make some problem for the government to achieve their power again, because they know they were not educated persons, so they couldn't continue their life uh, without education in, in judicial system. Uh, for, uh, for the, uh, after that, they, they announced to the people that uh, King is not a Muslim. He is trying to do something against uh, religious or like this uh, because they know how they can convince the people to be against the, the king. And after that, um, they could uh, achieve the power by this policy, but they never could uh, achieve the power uh, without support of um, uh, Britain, a great power. You know, a group of people, when they decide to be against the government, they never can be um, successful without the support outside of the country. So this group could uh, achieve the power by the support of the Britain. After that, what happened? The anti-feminist theory, for the first time, again, uh, started in Afghanistan to be implemented. Firstly, they, they closed the girls' school for the first time. Like, they, they make an emirate like now we have in Afghanistan. The, the the girls' school were closed. They uh, said um, that uh, the, the girls, they are uh, outside of Afghanistan. They must return back to Afghanistan because education is not important for the female. Female must stay home and they, they have some responsibility at home. Uh, before this, in the duration of King Amanullah, the, the age of marriage life for, for uh, girls uh, was uh, increased from child, it, it was increased, but again, they decrease it like before. And also, in, in the duration of the king, Amunullah, uh, he announced that uh, no man can have uh, more than two, uh, more than one wife. It means uh, the, 
it was uh, before it was a culture, but now he announced that after this it will be possible because he deleted all the changes before. Why I am focusing in these two periods? It was just for short period, just for four, uh, for nine months. This leader was in charge of Afghanistan, but he made something that no, uh, until now we are experiencing in Afghanistan. Uh, after nine months, because uh, he was not an edu educated um, person, and uh, the person, the people who were around the, this leader, they were not also educated, so uh, he couldn't continue the uh, the um, uh, power in Afghanistan because they didn't know how they can make the policies. Or like now, there is no policy making procedure; just they are focusing on the woman. How we can limit the uh, make some limitation for the woman just it is their policy making procedures as you know from augusta until now there is nothing to do something in afghanistan but uh, just they are focusing how we can uh, make some limitation on that period was the same so after that um, when uh, nadir came to the power he was also for four years in in power of afghanistan in in charge of, in the um, as a leader of afghanistan he was from uh, 1929 until uh, 1933. This person also. Uh, no, it is. Uh, it's okay. Uh, this person also didn't try to bring some changing uh, in the society because he was thinking, if I do something like King Amanola, I will lose my power. So he tried to be like uh, uh, Habibullah Kalakani. Uh, and uh, continued uh, like this, and uh, there were no school for girls and no education for women, no par uh, no participation of uh, women in the society like this. It continued. After that, uh, we had an, another uh, good period for the female because uh, from 1933 until uh, 1973, uh, King Zahir Shah was uh, uh, in power in Afghanistan, and he he tried to bring uh, again start the, the reform like uh, king amanullah and it was a good period also for for a long time for 40 years for women uh, when sometimes uh, we read or say something we we saw something we had on that time now in 21 century we don't have these opportunities because they they were uh, trying to to do something for the woman or for they know a bit of the woman participation there is no possibility of uh, improvement in, in the country. After um, King Zahir Shah, uh, it means uh, freedom of, um, uh, uh, it means human rights were implemented in Afghanistan in all aspects of the life. I cannot explain all the things because there is no time. Uh, after that, um, Dawood came to the power, and uh, Dawood Khan was uh, the first president of Afghanistan. It means for the first time, presidential system started in Afghanistan for uh, um, for five years. He also had uh, many plans for Afghanistan, especially in in economical aspect of uh, the society, and he had some plans for women, for all the things. But one point was he wanted to be independent. He never wanted to be under the control of any power. But Russia tried to to control our country by the uh, his, his power. When uh, he announced some some uh, opportunity for the um, our leader uh, King Daoud Khan, he rejected. He said, "If you you be our friend, most welcome. If you you want to control our uh, society, it is not possible for you." So, the Russia tried to do do something, and he again. Uh, competition with, uh, between uh, Russia and U.S. started, and uh, the most place uh, they could be, uh, their competition will be, uh, it was Afghanistan. So Russia tried to make a group against the government, and again it started uh, like, uh, maybe you know the situation in Afghanistan in the Russia, the Russian. So uh, um, the Soviet bloc or um, the, 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 the group of um, people who were under the support of um, uh, Russia came to the power one by one. When one were against the Russia and said it is not possible to, to do in Afghanistan, so this person were killed or they make some problem for him, another leader. It was like uh, not a, a, a system, it was like an anarchist uh, period. It means uh, one leader for one month, another leader for two, like uh, Babrak Karmala, Fizullah. I mean, we had many leaders in this 
period. After that, uh, in uh, 1978 until uh, after uh, 1987, again, a patriotic person by the name of Dr. Najib came to the power. And he was also, he was, uh, he decided to do something uh, differently. He was in negotiation with Russia and said, okay, we will be your friend, but you must leave Afghanistan because the people of Afghanistan cannot accept because uh, Russia tried to, to implement uh, the communism theory in Afghanistan, but it was not possible because people couldn't accept this. So the Russia accepted this. Uh, it was um, a good period uh, for all uh, in Afghanistan, but unfortunately, U.S. tried to defeat Russia in Afghanistan. So he supported a group of another group of people in Pakistan uh, by the name of Mujahideen. Maybe some person uh, will be follow the Mujahideen because they came in Afghanistan by the name of Jihad, but mostly. They supported by U.S. and they were uh, thinking about their positions, not anything uh, about the um, uh, situation of Afghanistan. Uh, again, um, Islamic State of Afghanistan started from 1992 until 1996. For about uh, for a period, it was an anarchy or anarchy duration. It means the leader. Uh, were uh, not uh, the, uh, that for, uh, slide is okay for me after that for them, you for them it's okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, after that uh, it means uh, in in the <clears throat> this period we didn't have uh, any opportunity to to improve because it was a big uh, war between the uh, group of leaders. One leader was in one province, another was in another province, uh, like uh, this, uh, he said that I should be the uh, president of Afghanistan. It means uh, we, we didn't have a good period, but one good point was that we had a school for the girls separately from the boys. It means we had some opportunity for the female, for the woman. But, uh, and uh, I will tell you a, a, a story, a, a girl story, a little girl story I mentioned in the PowerPoint. Like, you think that uh, one girl uh, in the age of school were, had a dream for, uh, for uh, several years and she was um, waiting for the age of school. Because uh, that girl uh, I, was I, I should explain my history. Because I was, um, after this, uh, I will explain to you my history because uh, you will know the real um, uh, example of the Afghanistan situation. Because after that, I remember what happened to my country. I was waiting for opening of the school to uh, the age of school for several years because uh, my brothers and sisters could uh, go to school. When I started my school, I was in first class of school when uh, the Taliban came in 1996. I, I cannot explain to you how was the situation for me as a child because it was the duration that I, I must play in outside of the home, but I couldn't go because the Taliban didn't allow me to go outside. I was a girl, just, just I injured because, I, because of my gender. My brother could go to school or... or um, Actually, uh, the school for boy also for boys it was not like a school. It was just madrasa, like a religious uh, madrasa for this. But it was an opportunity to going and coming, and they were happy with this. Uh, um, unfortunately, I couldn't continue my uh, study. Just I I could go to school for four months. After that, in first class of school, I start stop my education. As my situation was worse, every moment I asked from my family, from my mother, from my brother, that when my school will be open, it was continuously asking from my mother. My mother was silent because no one knows what will happen. Because it was a game playing in Afghanistan. For the first time, we heard the Talib name Taliban, Taliban. What is the Taliban? I didn't know. When I went outside of the home, I saw the society is totally different from before. 
So in this duration, I cannot tell you what happened to me. I couldn't go to school for, um, I think, one year after that. My family decided to send me a uh, home school, and home school was so uh, a close uh, place, and we didn't have uh, any right to go outside. And when we tried to go every day to school, we must um, have uh, some reason for to telling to the Taliban that's why we are going outside of the home. Every day when they ask, uh, we must tell that uh, me and my um, uh, younger sister, we tell them that uh, we are going to Masjid or we are going to another place. And every day we must change uh, our, our uh, uh, way of uh, going to school because if they know here is a school, they will make some problems. So our teacher uh, told us that you must be, uh, pay attention, that uh, no one knows that you are here for studying. I don't know how I, I can explain to you. It was so hard for me to accept this situation for, for six years, um, about six years. It was uh, five and um, a few months. It means six years. Every day I was uh, waiting for reopening of the school for me, for other uh, girls. Uh, actually, it, uh, after 9-11, after, uh, you know, America attacked to Afghanistan and destroyed all things. But we were happy. By the war, even we were happy because we, we were thinking maybe we will achieve some opportunity. We will have opportunity of going to school, uh, continue our education, or um, uh, some other opportunities. It was also uh, not so easy to achieve this aim because, you know, the, our culture is uh, different. Uh, our society is a, a close culture. Some people, some group of people, not all people, uh, they, they wanted to make some limitation for the female. And the, the, but by the, our, our efforts, our, we fought um, against the, this close culture and we could uh, achieve our dreams one by one until uh, 2021 i could uh, have uh, my phd degree it means uh, you can imagine that in in 1996 i was waiting just for opening of the school in this duration i could achieve my dream until the phd degree and it was not so easy and i had some jobs because i interested to be in in academic uh, environment so my workplace was herat university i was working at the academic research center and also inside of the besides of the work i had many other association working for them so it was a good period and um, not uh, so easy to achieve these dreams because we had war the taliban attacked to the girls school in this uh, two decades in uh, from 2001 until 2021, they killing the children at the school because they are against the education, you know. So they never think, um, where is this school who is going? Just when they heard the name of the school, they attack to this school. In this environment, in this uh, difficult circumstances, we, we could achieve our dreams. Until uh, August, uh, I, you know what happened to Afghanistan. I was in shock for two months in Afghanistan because I couldn't believe. Again, Taliban come to Afghanistan. Again, it repeated. We, we turn back to 20 years. It is not possible. Who is responsible for this? America came to Afghanistan because of democracy, women rights, human rights. But what happened? Just they, it was a game. It was they, they wanted to show themselves in the world. They convinced the world that we will go to Afghanistan because of the woman rights. But now you know the situation of women. My colleagues will explain to you when is in Afghanistan in dangerous situation. She is an example of all the women they are in Afghanistan. Another is in Pakistan in, in dangerous situation. I know I was for four months in Pakistan. So it is the time that the world cannot be silent. If they want, now I, I see that UN, uh, European Parliament or US, all of them are happy or, or, or they are silent. They cannot be because they supported the, the US to enter to Afghanistan. These big powers, now they are silent. They, are, they don't have anything to tell. But we will ask them once why they are dealing with our dreams 
But uh, if it was like period of the Taliban continue for 20 years, maybe we used to be like this. But now we cannot accept because we are our, we acknowledge that what is our right, what is our um, rules, what should we do, how we should continue our life. We cannot accept this uh, closed culture environment in the period of the Taliban in Afghanistan. So, I, uh, uh, well, uh, it, it was just uh, not uh, um, even the facts that I, I will uh, let you know. It was a reality of the system, the theories that you know. When sometimes we read something in the books, we, we said, uh, okay, democracy is a good uh, way of uh, governance. But it's not all the time saying, because democracy in the US has another result, and Afghanistan has another result. You will know by, by ministry or by Afghanistan, because Afghanistan has experience of all the kind of the political system, monarchy, anarchy, um, uh, empire, um, um, or, um, democracy, uh, kingship, all the type of, the, we read something in the books, it is different from reality. You know, maybe sometimes king, uh, I prefer to have a, a kingship or a kingdom in Afghanistan inside of democracy if it is not workable for me, if it can not support me to continue my life. Now, you know, the situation is worse for all the women and the international community is silent. Now, today, I will, on the behalf of the women of Afghanistan, I will ask all of you if you can access in, in any opportunity to, to send our message to the world. Please don't be silent, because if you are human defender, we are human. If you are uh, woman activist or a uh, uh, woman right defender, we are woman. If you, you think education is good for you, it is good for us. If, if, uh, if we think uh, just about ourselves, it is not a uh, sense of humanity. All the world must think about the situation of women. Why we lost our opportunities? Why we lost our jobs? Why we lost everything in Afghanistan? It is not just uh, for women. I, I focus on the women because it is uh, my topic is about the women in the parts of history of Afghanistan. But uh, for uh, for uh, men also, educated person uh, don't have any uh, opportunity in Afghanistan. And who is responsible for this situation? You know, the big powers. Now, again, maybe they started another game to playing in other places of the world. But if you be silent like this, after this, maybe another place they will select for their Because they never think about what will happen to the people. Just they are thinking how they can get benefit from this, the situation. And which is the best place to, game, to play a game. If if uh, you you uh, or me or other uh, they they have some opportunity to talk about this situation and they will be silent after this maybe it will turn back to you because no one knows what will happen in the future but it is uh, our responsibility to to send the message of the woman from Afghanistan to all the world don't forget them they are waiting for your support. I, I, it is uh, an honor for me to be here, but I am not so relaxed because the rest of my family members are in Afghanistan, my friends are there. When I think, okay, I'm here with my children, but actually I'm not happy. I should be happy, but I'm not happy because I know how is, it's hard for, for Afghans in Afghanistan, in other countries. Even I heard here in Italy, they have many problems. Because they lost their job in Afghanistan, they are educated, they are uh, jobless here, uh, just they, they are um, like a, a refugee. They need your support to help them to achieve their dreams. If the big power plays some game with them, you cannot do this. We are human, we must be together. Uh, thanks uh, to attention to my speech. Maybe it was um, a short uh, speech uh, because uh, there is, I think there is no time for me. Yes, uh, yeah, just I have... Uh, up some minutes if you want. 
Uh, so uh, it was uh, my story was uh, actually a sad story because uh, after August I started my journey across the border with three children to Pakistan. I was thinking maybe it is a good place for me to be safe, but it was uh, you know a, a, a wrong decision I, I had. Why? Because in Pakistan. Uh, the, if the Taliban are physically in Afghanistan, mentally they are in Pakistan. You know the supporter of the Taliban. They, they are, so if they are, uh, if uh, we have be in Pakistan, in uh, our neighbor in Iran, our situation is not so good. So uh, why I, I left Afghanistan? I, I maybe one of you have this uh, question because uh, before this I never was thinking uh, I should leave my country because uh, I was thinking my country needs some people, educated people, to to uh, um, uh, for uh, working for development of Afghanistan. And actually, in my mind, it was that uh, after, uh, according to uh, our constitution, I couldn't be the president of Afghanistan before 40 years old. Now I'm 33 years. Maybe it, it is a big dream, but it was in my mind that I should be the first president uh, candidate for a presidential system of Afghanistan. But uh, when I saw the situation is uh, difficult for me to go my workplace because I had um, two days uh, I went to uh, my home for going outside in August, uh, after August, because Taliban came to my society to Herat uh, on 12th of August. I was in shock for two months. Uh, on uh, 25th of September, first, uh, my son came to me and asked me, Mom, I want to go outside of the home. I'm angry at home like this. So I tried to go outside. Uh, I saw the first when uh, I went outside of the home, uh, the first things I saw four people killed by the Taliban and hanging in the main uh, four main streets of uh, my city. When my son saw this situation, he, he asked me, "What happening to them? Uh, why their uh, face are bloody? Why they are?" Uh, he had many questions. I was thinking how I can explain all the things to him. Uh, so, uh, and uh, my friends called me and said to me they are searching for people. And these people, they announced to the to the society that they are kidnapped. We killing them and uh, we are hanging them in the main street. Uh, to the other people cannot do this like this. But actually, it was it is not um, true, because they are killing the previous policeman, um, government uh, worker. And uh, by by different names and different reasons, just they announced they are kidnapper or they are um, they did some crime like this thing. Uh, after um, for, it was um, the first day. After that, I, I tra my family, my friends said to me you should leave Afghanistan. Maybe something happened to you to your family. So I couldn't uh, accept this. I decided to go to the um, Herat University. Maybe my dean of university, Mr. Faiz, uh, heard me now. Um, uh, uh, I went to Herat University. The, first, the, the um, representative of uh, Taliban, the person who is uh, in charge of Herat University. The first thing, he, uh, I was in his office, he couldn't look at me. I don't know why. I was thinking why he, he cannot uh, look at me. I am talking. He, he asked me like this. Okay, sister, what is your problem? I said that uh, I just I want to ask some question about Herat uh, University. Some maybe um, female uh, staff are worried about your future like this. Nothing happened. Uh, he said to me, Okay, if you want to go any uh, other official offices, you must have your mahram with you. Your husband should be with you. I was thinking how it is danger. For 10 years, I was working in this place. Now I, I should ask my husband to come with me every day. I uh, turned back home and uh, once again, we decided, me and my husband decided to go in another official office. I was just searching for uh, the, the environment, uh, what's going on. In the, another official office, um, in the door, the, the guard asked me, oh, where do you want to go? I said, I want to go inside of the office. He said, no, it is not possible for you. Your husband can go. You must wait here. 
I was uh, telling why. I said, he is my, uh, my mahram. He came with me. The, the problem I have, how my husband can go uh, inside of the office, I wait here. I'm not his mahram, he is my mahram. So I was thinking the situation is not uh, acceptable for me as an educated person, how I can, if they give me the higher position in Afghanistan, even now they announce you, you turn back, we will give you uh, many opportunities, you will be the, uh, the minister, uh, minister of higher education, I never can accept because their mind is uh, sick. And I cannot accept uh, this idea that uh, they make a limitation or, you know, the current situation, I don't want to explain everything for you. Uh, just I will request all of you that be with us and uh, stand with women in Afghanistan. They are alone now, no one is with them. They need your cooperation or I ask uh, maybe in the future, I will be. I have, will have an, uh, another opportunity to request from other uh, organization or uh, international community associations. So, uh, thanks for being with me today. I hope something will be helpful for you to understand better the situation. And uh, uh, I, I hope that I could make clear something for you about the situation of a woman uh, in Afghanistan from for one century from 1919 until uh, 19, uh, until 2021 in one century that we had uh, some up and down so uh, thanks to being with me uh, <clears throat> nice to meet you piace yes, yeah, <laughs> sorry if, <laughs> if i okay Thanks. If you have uh, any question, you can ask me after uh, the speech of my uh, friends. They are uh, waiting for their speech. Uh, so thanks to being with me. So thank you. Thank you very much, Shakofa. I don't think uh, I have enough words to express my admiration and uh, uh, for your courage and uh, the uh, moving uh, episodes that you have uh, uh, generously shared with us. I think it's a, a, a real teaching lesson for us and for our students of intercultural communication. Um, I think we will have to uh, wait for uh, the other four <clears throat> Uh, researchers uh, that are friends uh, of uh, uh, Shakofa and uh, uh, are also um, in uh, different places around the world and they have accepted also to share their experience uh, uh, their experiences with us uh, today uh, although although briefly uh, they are Kirang Sadat who is uh, currently in Pakistan Lida Kriam who is currently in uh, United States, Arizona, yeah. right, in Arizona. Uh, Usna Raufi, who is uh, still in Afghanistan, and she'll tell us, and uh, Batul Haidari, who is uh, also in uh, Italy. Uh, the first uh, one, and then we will have time for questions, uh, answers, uh, discussions. Uh, so the first uh, um, friend and researcher is uh, Kirang Sadat. Hi, Kirang. Can you hear us? Yes, hello, yes. hello everyone. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, okay, fine. Uh, okay, I'll introduce yeah. you and then I'll leave you the floor, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Maybe she has some problems. Should I ask Yes, okay. I will provide a, a short introduction. Hello, uh, to you, and then you can actually uh, express uh, your presentation. So, uh, Kirang Sadat comes from the uh, Ghazni province. She has a Bachelor of Law and Economy, and she's uh, a women's rights activist, one of uh, protesters against Taliban, and a businesswoman. Besides, she has been working as a supervisor at ORCA, that is uh, the Opinion Research Center of Afghanistan. Please uh, 
Kirang. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone, and uh, thanks to Ms. Shikufa Barzai for uh, holding this program, and thanks to all of you for giving me time to today I speak about the uh, situation, about the problems, about the difficulties of all of those women that they forced to leave Afghanistan. Now they are in a very bad situation in Pakistan. As you said, uh, I'm Karen Saadat. I had partnership with the social uh, and society activists, and I'm a woman uh, rights activist. And as well, I am one of the protesters that uh, just two days after coming Taliban to Afghanistan, after the fall of Afghanistan, we started protest uh, against the uh, ideology, against the regime, against the, against the behavior of uh, Taliban in Afghanistan. And now I'm here in Pakistan. I would like to say about the situation of all those women that they are now here in Pakistan. Has a lot of problems. That uh, the most important problem is the mental state. It is one of the biggest problem that uh, all refugees, all the women, they are uh, here in Pakistan. They face. They are in a critical and unfortunate situation. I want to say one example of myself. When I want to share. Uh, uh, some issue with my friends, or when I want to interview with a major, I forgot all the information or all the data because of the bad mental state that we have here in Pakistan, that the majority or the most of the women who are here in Pakistan, they face to, to this bad situation. And as well, the financial problem or the financial issue is one of the other uh, difficulties or one of uh, the other problem that the majority of women um, face here because now they don't have salary, they don't have a job, and they cannot earn money. That's why they're in a very bad financial situation in Pakistan. Even they um, have the problem of accommodation, the medical problem, even the food problem that uh, uh, the women who are here in Pakistan, they face with this kind of problem. And one other uh, and the biggest problem that we have here in Pakistan, the visas problem. Uh, you know, it is a rule in Pakistan that if we have visa for six months or if we have visa for one year, every two months we have to go to the border and um, for a stay, for a stamp the, the uh, entry of uh, Pakistan. Uh, and Taliban uh, limited the women of Afghanistan that any Afghan woman cannot go a uh, abroad country or a foreign country without mahram. It means that every Afghan woman to want to go in a foreign country, her brother, her husband, or her uh, father should be with her. So when uh, every two months we go to the border, Taliban will uh, see us and will ask us about our mahram. We don't have uh, mahram. For example, when I, I want to go to the border, the Taliban ask me, where is your mahram? I don't have a mahram. Then Taliban do not allow me to come back to Pakistan. And they will, uh, will uh, search about me, who am I? They will know that I'm a woman rights activist, or I'm a journalist, or I'm a protester. So uh, in this situation, it is a risk for me to go and bother every two months uh, in Pakistan. And as well, if one country accept me or anyone in Pakistan, so in airport of Pakistan, the Pakistani police started business by using of this bad, bad situation that we have in Pakistan. I want to say uh, the story of one of my friend. She uh, accepted in France. Then uh, when she went to uh, the airport, the uh, Pakistani police um, said, why well, don't have this stay? I said about this stay that uh, if you go in border, then Taliban will not allow us again. So she said, I don't have this stay. Then the, uh, the Pakistan police rejected her, via, her uh, ticket. And more than three times, he uh, pay money for the uh, ticket. It's one of the biggest problem. We have financial problem. Then they start the business with us in this bad situation. So um, uh, we have uh, this uh, kind of problem as well in Pakistan. And as well, 
uh, although we are now here in Pakistan, uh, we are not in direct threats here in Pakistan, but we are not safe here. We cannot uh, post anything about the um, Taliban in social media. We cannot interview in the media about the um, Taliban. We cannot participate in different programs because if we participate, if we speak, if we discuss, if we rise our rights, then Taliban will uh, trade our family in Afghanistan. So now we are ne not safe here uh, uh, in Pakistan as well. And also one of the other problem, because of issue of uh, Ukraine, unfortunately, the European country especially forgot Afghanistan. It is about one month that the uh, European country uh, rejected all the cases that's why they are thinking just about Ukraine issue. It's not our fault that uh, this bad situation happened uh, in uh, Ukraine. We are sad as well about this issue. But let's do not forget us in, in this bad situation. They promised us that you should go in um, Pakistan. We will help you. Now it's more than six months that we are here in Pakistan. We are in a, uh, thinking about unknown future. You know, I am 26 years old, but now uh, I should think uh, like a woman who is 50 years old. Your, your, your sons, your children, your girls who are living in uh, European country, who, is, uh, who are 26 years old, they are enjoying the life, they are learning knowledge, they are uh, studying education, but now all those women who are here in Pakistan or Iran or any other country in this bad situation, they are just thinking about the unknown future that they, it's not clear what will happen for them uh, when uh, the, the Taliban will kill their family. We are in this bad situation. Just now our voices, our uh, power, we try to uh, say the world, try to say to any country, anyone that we are in bad situation. And it's my request of all of you, if you have any contact with uh, organization, with countries, let's say for them uh, that uh, let's do not forget uh, as in this bad situation. You know, now in Afghanistan, many uh, uh, problem the women have in Afghanistan. The, uh, schools are closed. The women cannot work. I was a woman, a business woman, but now my store is closed. I don't know what should I do. I'm here uh, uh, in an unknown future. I say just uh, myself, but many, many uh, women are here in Pakistan in this bad situation that uh, uh, they don't know what should I, uh, what should they do. Uh, at the end, uh, I want to say that uh, let's. Uh, take my message to the world, to any organization that you have access or contact that do not uh, uh, forget Afghanistan or do not uh, forget the women of Afghanistan in this bad situation. Although there is a lot of problem here in Pakistan, but the, uh, due to the leak of time, I cannot address all of these pro um, this problems. It was these problems that I said, it was the uh, permanent problems that we have here in Pakistan. And it's a big honor that I'm here uh, and I'm discussing about the situation of Afghanistan. I know all those women who are here in Pakistan Although they are in danger, although they are in risk, but they are trying to raise the voice of women of Afghanistan. Thank you for your attention. Federico, scusami di nuovo, noi non vi sentiamo da casa. Ok. Uh, now? I don't know why. Perfetto, adesso sì. Ok, now? Is it working? Simona? Because if I activate here... Sì, adesso ti sentiamo bene. Ok, fine. I don't know why. 
I don't know why it doesn't work uh, on the other uh, on the other tablet. Anyway, uh, sorry, I was saying uh, thank you very much to uh, Kerang for being with us and share and sharing uh, these enlightening uh, uh, comments uh, about her own uh, experience. Uh, and I will proceed now immediately to give the floor to Lida Kreini. Lida, can you hear me? Oleda, excuse me, my pronunciation. Is it Lida? Yeah. Lida. Uh, Lida Kraini. I see that Lida is there, but uh, now I open her microphone. Can you see her microphone now, if the microphone is yeah. on? Yeah, Lida, may you may you talk so we can understand if we listen to you? Is this Lida? No, there are some Lida, can you try to talk? Maybe, Federico, we can pass to, to the Usna next speaker. And see if yes. Uh, yeah. Ah. Thanks. Usna, uh, we can actually proceed to the third speaker, Usna Raufi, and then we will try to fix uh, uh, Lida's. Uh, uh, problems with the audio, I think, uh, although I cannot uh, see her either. Usna. I don't know if Usna. U okay, Usna. Yes, she's there. Okay, can you see her? Yeah. Yeah, she's there. Okay, Usna. Uh, Raufi uh, is a journalist also a women's rights activist, uh, as well as the founder and chief executive of uh, Nations uh, Analysis Organization. She speaks about active and influential Afghan women in the Republican system and uh, after the Republic. And today is, uh, as far as I understand, uh, she will be speaking in Pashto at least, uh, and then I will provide a very brief uh, back translation. Uh, Husna, please, if you want, you can start, if she's here. Okay, I'm here. Okay, yes, go ahead, please. The first, uh, I want to speak English, and after... Uh, I we can hardly hear you, actually. Who's now? I'm to speak on brown woman on our site. And, and this is story of Islam. We have successful women poets and writers, such, such as Bibi Aisha and Bibi Khadija, where who were traders and the first and the first majority of Islam, Bibi Sumaya, the one who performed Safa and Marwa for the first time and still million of the Grammar performs Haji like her Bibi Haja. But in Afghanistan, we have famous Afghans such as. I think we have lost. Moment. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Uzna, can you hear me? Because we can barely hear you at the moment. Uzna? I think uh, uh, maybe I can proceed uh, to read uh, the translation. If because apparently in Afghanistan, uh, Shakofa was saying that there are problems with connections, of course, uh, for um, other reasons. What do you think, Shakofa? Shall I read and then uh, she can participate in the discussion? Maybe. No, can maybe she can just uh, briefly explain the women who are uh, living in Afghanistan. And, uh, okay. Uh, I will try to uh, summarize uh, um, the presentation uh, by Usna that was about uh, some major relevant uh, women in Afghanistan. Uh, today, I want to express uh, the real image of Afghan women at this conference. Afghan women are example of courage and success. About the success of women, I would like to start from the Islamic period. Throughout the history of Islam, to the present day, in every corner of, of Afghanistan, brave women are praised. In the history of Islam, we have successful women, poets and writers, such as uh, Bebe Aisha and Bebe Kadye, who were traders and the first martyr of Islam, Bebe Somaya. The one who performed Safa and Marwa for the first time, and today millions of pilgrims perform Hajj like her. Bebe Hayer, famous uh, Afghan poets uh, such as uh, Aisha Durrani, Makfi Badakhshki, Zib Al Nisa, and so on. Afghanistan's history has young women poets, writers, leaders, and young journalists in it. Women who are strong in every difficult and easy moment. Famous Afghan poets and writers uh, such as uh, Aisha Durrani, Zib Al Nisa, Etc. But I would like to mention the young and militant women of the country who had the most prominent activities during the fall of the Republican government, such as Tamina Mirzei, journalist, speaker, and women's rights activist, Mariam Sediki, founder of MMO, Anya Nori, journalist and civil activist, Krishma. Bakhtani, a businesswoman, Adiba Mohammadi, journalist and civil activist, Baja Aman, author, and Shabnam Nori, journalist and civil activist. As the representative of Afghan women, I define Afghan women as a symbol of struggle and courage, those who progressed and did not fall behind in any situation. As a key example, I have uh, uh, selected uh, several examples, uh, two of which uh, could be useful to shed light uh, on uh, those uh, women. The first one is uh, Tamina Mirzaye. Among her functions and activities, uh, we can list one, being selected as the top speaker of Kabul University in the competitive process. Two, being ranked first at the Faculty of Journalism and Communication of Kabul University. Three, winning the first place among hundreds of students from all over the country in the competitive voting process of positive generation ambassadors. Four, elected as the head of the Women Speakers Association of Afghanistan. Five, founder of Nations Analysis Organization. Six, the representative of the youth in one of the consultative lawyer Girgas. And then Baja Aman, also an active woman. She's the author of the theory of a thousand and one drops of blood book. She's the author of an article on social justice solutions that published, that was published in Hushed Sob newspaper. She's also the author of an article of justice that appeared in the GWS news. She did several TV interviews 
on uh, various issues, including uh, the demands of Afghan girls uh, from uh, the Islamic Emirate. Baja Amman is also the founder of uh, an online classroom for female school dropouts. And she's an active participation participant, sorry, she's an active participant in holding uh, the TEDx online program. She did motivational speeches uh, for a group of students uh, who have uh, just uh, entered public university. And finally, Mrs. Uh, Maria Masediki, founder of the MMO organization. In addition to being a, a student, she was also a member of several social institutions and worked as a head, administrative manager, advisor, deputy, and member of national and international organizations. She worked as a social activist in the society and defends the rights of youth, especially women. She was also an active student at the university. We can mention her presence as a panelist in the open government debate held by the high presidential office at Kabul University. Mariam is also the founder, as I was saying, of MMO, Mission Mind Organization. During the Islamic Emirat, she was also able to gather a group of elite women and youth of the country under the name of Mission Mind Organization. They carry out many activities during the Islamic Emirate, such as winter aid campaigns, advocacy for women and girls, and they provide employment opportunities for young people. And the list goes on, uh, goes on quite a lot. Thank you very much on behalf of Husna Raufi. Okay, now we have uh, our, uh, I don't know if uh, um, Kiranga is uh, able to speak now, yeah? Uh, Lida or uh, Batul? Sorry, Lida uh, or Batul? Okay, maybe B Batul. Batul Hidari, who is uh, currently yes, in Italy. Hi, hi Batul, welcome. Hello, hello, thank you. I am here. Thank you. Okay, I will introduce you uh, and then uh, you can proceed uh, to your speech. Uh, and I understand that you will uh, also speak uh, briefly in Dari so that uh, I will translate. Am I correct? Okay, thank you. Okay, so Batul Aldari has a bachelor degree in general psychology and a master in clinical psychology. She is now a PhD student uh, in clinical psychology at the University of Isfahan, Iran. She is professor at Kabul University and, the fac and an, a faculty member of uh, Rabbani State University. She has written four books on fiction and two books. Uh, on psychology. Uh, today she will speak uh, in. Uh? When she will speak. Okay. Speak. Okay. Please. Uh, Batul. Okay. Uh, buonasera, professora, studente, ospite. Io sono felice di far sentire la mia voce italiana oggi. Io sono tre mesi rifugi in Italia e mi sono innamorato questo languido dalle persone. Salam be hamid dostan. Khoshhalam ki imshab dar miyan shoma hastam. Afghanistan bo tawajjuh be sharayid va moqiyati ke dar va mazhabiyun ifrati va sunnat hay sah بر جامعه حاکم بود و هر روز انفجار و حوادث اتفاق می افتاد سطح افسردگی و خشونت بر زنان و کودکان زیاد بود برای همین زنان تحصیل کرده در حوزه روانشناسی جزو نخستین گروه هایی بودند 
که خواستار این شدند تا بخش روانشناسی و خدمات مشاوره را در سطح افغانستان فعال کنند و برای بهبود روان و سلامت جامعه مراکز مشاوره ها با تمام کمبودها را در سطح شهرهای بزرگ و کوچک راه اندازی کنند و روانشناس هایی را تربیت کنند برای همین زنان با توجه به دموکراسی که در جامعه باز شده بود و زنان نسبت به داشتن فردای سبز سرشار از امید بودند در کنار هم قرار گرفتند تا این بخش که در فضا افغانستان جای خالی از دیده می شد را باز کنند و بتوانند برای ارتقای سلام را جای خودشان تلاش کنند در همین راستا در آن شناسهایی را آموزش داده و به زندانها خانه های امن به ادارات پلیس برای انجام خدمات روانشناختی فرستادن ما زنان نخستین مراکز مشاوره را در دانشگاه ها ایجاد کردیم و دفاترش را فعال کردیم خود من به عنوان یک زن نخستین شخصی هستم در زمینه درمان مشکلات جنسی در میان جوانان و زنان شروع به فعالیت کردم و تا مقطع دکترا تحصیلات خودم را ادامه دادم رساله فوق لیسانس من درباره درمان سرد مزاجی جنسی زنان بود به رساله دکترای من درمان اختلال کودک خواهی یا پیدوفیلی و در کشور من بچه بازی عنوان می شود که بر روی سی بیمار کار درمانی را شروع کرده بودم که با آمدن طالبان و تسلیم شدن کشور نتوانستم تحقیق خودم را به اتمام برسانم با را نیمه کار رها کردم استخبارات طالبان خبر شده بود که من روی یکی از مشکلاتی که در بین سربازان طالب وجود دارد در حال تحقیق هستم. لذا جان من و خانوادم به خطر شد و مجبور شدیم افغانستان را ترک کنیم. من جز حامیان ترانسجندر ها در افغانستان بودم که متاسفانه حکم مرگ برای آنها از طرف جامعه داده می شد. ولی در مراکز مشاوره ما از آنها حمایت می کردیم. به آنها خدمات درمانی می دادیم. برای بالا بردن سطح آگاهی جامعه بسته افغانستان در رسانه ها صحبت می کردیم و می نوشتیم. اما با آمدن طالبان تمام معادلات بر هم خورد و تمام تلاش های ما را با خاک یکسان کردند و دست هایی که برای ما آزادی و دموکراسی را هدیه آورده بود ناگهان در برابر ما ایستادند و تمام کوشش های ما را ضرب به صفر کردند. ما برای نجات جان خود با توجه به این اصل که زنده ماندن خود نوعی مبارزه است از کشور خارج شدیم و روزهای سختی را در مسیر خروج در کشورهای دیگر سپری کردیم با اینکه به ایتالیا برای داشتن روزگاری امنتر پناه آوردیم ولی زنان و مردم را در داخل کشور فراموش نکردیم و همچنان به مردمی که در داخل افغانستان هستند و پناهنده هایی که به اینجا آمدن مشاوره می دهیم من خوشحال می شوم از این تریبون به دوستان من در ایتالیا بگویم پناهنده هایی که به ایتالیا آمده همه تحصیل کرده و سرمایه های افغانستان هستند و باید آنها جدی گرفته شوند و جذب دانشگاه ها شوند امیدوارم فضایی باز شود که حداقل بتوانیم پروژه های تحقیقی خودمان را که نیمه کاره مانده است زیر نظر استادان اینجا تمام کنیم و بتوانیم نتایج تحقیقات خودمان را در جورنال های علمی دنیا چاپ کنیم و به دنیا ارائه دهیم امیدوارم بتوانیم آینده سبز را رقم بزنیم و اگر ما زنان در افغانستان در حال حضر شدن هستیم حداقل در ایتالیا فراموش نشویم و بتوانیم از این سرزمین که معهد هنر و دانش است صدای خودمان را برای جهانیان بلند کنیم و در کنار پرچم ایتالیا پرچم افغانستان را همیشه سربلند نگه داریم تشکر از اینکه تا اینجای برنامه ما را همراهی کردید دوستتان داریم به امید فردای روشنی که در راه است
Let me just it was Thanks mute. Okay. So much. No, sorry, I don't know why it keeps uh, switching off, but there is a misconnection between uh, what we see here and also the screen uh, in the room. So I do apologize, yeah. but we don't know how to solve it. Um, so thank you very much, Batul, uh, also for giving us the opportunity to uh, listen to some diary. So as agreed, uh, I will provide uh, uh, um, a translation, a summary of uh, uh, what uh, she has just said. Um, due to its situation, Afghanistan was dominated by extremist religions and harsh traditions, and everyday explosions and incidents occurred. The level of depression and violence of women and children was high. For this reason, women educated in the field of psychology were among the first groups to call for the activation of psychology and counseling services in Afghanistan to improve the mental health of the community, to activate counseling centers in major cities, to train psychologists. Therefore, given the democracy that was opening up in the society, women hoping for a green tomorrow came together to open this part that was seen as a vacancy in Afghanistan, to be able to work to promote the mental health of society, especially women and girls. For this reason, they trained psychologists and sent them to prisons, safe houses and police stations for psychological services. We established the first counseling centers in universities and activated its offices. As a woman, I am the first person. I started working on treating sexual problems among young people and women and continued my education until my doctorate. My master's thesis was on the treatment of female genital warts and my doctoral dissertation was on the treatment of pedophilia. Taliban intelligence had been informed that I was investigating one of the problems among Taliban soldiers. So my life and that of my family were in danger, and I was forced to leave Afghanistan. I was a supporter of transgender people in Afghanistan. Unfortunately, they were sentenced to death by that society. But in the counseling centers, we supported them and provided them with medical services. And we spoke and wrote in the media to raise the awareness of the closed society of Afghanistan. But with the advent of the Taliban, all equations were upset and all our efforts were reduced to rubble. And the hands that gave us freedom and democracy suddenly stood in front of us and reduced all our efforts to zero. We left the country to save our lives on the principle that survival is a struggle. Survival is a struggle. We had difficult days on the way out to other countries. Although we took refuge, refuge, sorry, although we took refuge in Italy to have a safe life, we didn't forget the women and people in our country. We also advised the people inside of Afghanistan and the refugees who have come here. I am happy to tell friends from here the refugees who came to Italy are all educated at the Afghan capital. I hope there will be a space where we can at least complete our half-finished research projects with the help and guidance of professors here. And we can publish, hopefully, the results of our research in scientific journals and present them to the world. I hope we can create a green future. And if we, women in Afghanistan, are being eliminated, we will not be forgotten in Italy. And we can raise our voice to the world from this land, which is the homeland of its artists, 
and keep the Afghan flag proud next to the Italian flag. Thank you for listening and accompanying this program so far. I love you. Hoping for a bright tomorrow that is on its way. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you enormously also to Batul. I don't know if our last speaker is available, Simona uh, Lida. I, I, I just check. Mm -hmm. Just a moment, uh, Lida. Because is unfortunately she... for uh, Lida uh, did not send uh, her text. Uh, so I, okay. in English. because she was speaking in English, uh, but she cannot, uh, Activate our connection. Jess, we try a last time. Can you uh, try to speak? Because your microphone is open now. I am so sorry. I'm so Lida sorry. is in Arizona, so maybe I don't know. Uh, she has her microphone open, but we don't hear anything. Maybe she can send us her speech and we will try to publish in okay. our I page think what website. we can what we can do is to ask her for her speech or slides, and then we can also publish them on the website of uh, the CD uh, of the the green course or of the department somehow, and we will manage. Okay. Yeah, I am. Because we still we have t uh, ten to fifteen minutes for discussions uh, and discussion, and maybe there are some questions uh, here. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree, Federico. Okay, so uh, are you, we can discuss uh, about uh, all these uh, uh, testimonials uh, that uh, have been uh, so hopefully so enriching uh, for all of us. Uh, so I'll open that to the floor if there are some questions for Shakofa or for her uh, colleagues. Also from home. Yes. Uh, a question for Shakofa is maybe for like uh, all of us. Uh, all of us. Uh, all of us. Uh, all of us. Uh, Yes. Uh, in English or Italian, and then I translate. Okay, otherwise yes. I can translate as yes. you prefer. Uh, so I, I will do it in uh, in English. Uh, so the question is more for like uh, the university community. So we we heard a lot about uh, don't uh, uh, I mean that we should raise our voice, that we should not forget and leave it in silence, what is happening to women in Afghanistan, and uh, not only Afghanistan. Uh, so uh, my question is, what can we do as uh, a universitarian community, as a university community, to not leave it in silence? What, what can we con concretely uh, do? Because sometimes, as a student, I feel uh, overwhelmed and uh, not really feeling able to actually do some do something where I would feel like so. That's a question. Maybe I, I'm, it's more for the professors in the University of Turin, but uh, okay. anybody. Can actually say something yes. about this uh, from her uh, perspective, and then I can add yes. something. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. What's your name? Irene. Thank you, Irene. Uh, thank you, Irene. Uh, I, it, it was not uh, directly uh, requested from you. You can send uh, our message or transfer our message to any um, uh, meeting or association. You can. And also, as a student, uh, if I understand, the question is that uh, as a student, uh, what, what we can, we do, can do for do the... From, uh, from abroad, from other countries. Yeah, for, but uh, you can, uh, for example, um, but I cannot suggest you anything. You can think about this, that um, this is a hard situation for uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, for example, if someone tell you that you uh, from tomorrow you cannot go to university, what will happen to you? with uh, unfinished dreams 
when they, it, it happened in the childhood, like uh, the, the girls, they are going to school, it is not uh, possible uh, to continue the life. So you can be the voice of these uh, girls in Afghanistan. You can, you can write a, a message in the social media uh, uh, on the behalf of the women or girls in Afghanistan, or you, you all can have a, a letter and uh, refer to the university. Maybe I'm not in, in a state of you to decide about you. Maybe these are the way if I be, um, was in a state of you as now, we held this uh, conference and I will try more, not just for uh, Afghanistan, uh, for Afghan female or women in Afghanistan. Even we try to, to be the voice of uh, Ukrainian because they are also in, in danger situation now. But uh, uh, the problem is that as my uh, friend uh, talk in Pakistan, from that time the Ukraine uh, crisis started, um, uh, they had some cases in progress in, in European uh, countries, they stopped. They said, after this, we can focus on the Ukraine. Uh, it means now they, they don't have any power to, to announce or to achieve their dreams. Just you can be their power. Your voice can be their power to, to achieve their dreams. You can write a paper. You can uh, send, uh, write a message in social media that the world should... Uh, uh, not forget Afghans, uh, especially Afghan women in Afghanistan. It was, uh, if, if I agree, or you can select any, another way to support them by your voice, by your speech, by, by any kind of uh, possibility you have. Uh, thanks you. Yeah. Thanks, Shakova. May Federico, I had just a, a quick answer. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, please go ahead, Simone, and then there is another question here from the room, so we can uh, alternate. Something that we can all do, and it's uh, very improved by our department, and I know by our sorry colleagues, is that we have to know our territory, our communities, the association that works inside our reality, ordinary and daily uh, activities. We have not so far from campus. So no better our communities and association may uh, give you the opportunity to do something right now. I would like just to remember two possibilities. The Associazione Mosaico, Azione per i Rifugiati, who is an association founded in Zurich by refugees themselves. So if you want to know them, just go to knock to their door and try to understand what they are doing and in which way you may support their activities. They have uh, exactly a project who echoes the words Shakova uh, used, develop dreams. Refugees need dreams. As we do, we need to think and imagine our future full of dreams. dreams. Children of refugees need to dream. And so if we go close to refugee education, we can help their project to become a reality. And another possibility is to our project at the University of Turing, that is a mentorship project in which Shakofa is uh, involved. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Simona. Yes. You should introduce yourself. I know you. Uh, Buonasera, non volevo apparire qua, uh, però davvero da uh, uomo afgano voglio ringraziare Shkofa che ha organizzato questo momento. Eh, ringrazio l'università da ex studente che ha dato la possibilità, si può parlare dell'Afghanistan, della situazione delle donne in Afghanistan nelle sede dell'università. Spero che questa situazione, questo racconto, oh, questa testimonianza non sia poi solo, solo un momento di 
lezione diciamo normale o un momento di intrattenimento che adesso avete, avete avuto un sacco di informazioni sulle donne in Afghanistan, che situazione vivono, uscendo di qua non possiamo commentare solo dire che terribile situazione, ma in, poi, non, poi nessuna azione concreta. La questione del um, mosaico per i rifugiati che ha accennato uh, la professoressa, sì, è un, un, uno dei luoghi che si può rivolgersi per collaborare con, uh, con i rifugiati. Però le persone che sono arrivate con l'evacuazione dal 15, 15 agosto in poi, loro non sono persone eh, come sono arrivati io, per esempio, in Italia, da clandestino, con gommone, tutto, tutto, tutta questa parte per sopravvivere, diciamo, per scappare proprio dalla guerra. Queste persone sono arrivate qua, ma hanno investito tutto quello che avevano in Afghanistan per costruirsi un futuro. Un co costruirsi un futuro, cioè fare l'università. Hanno smesso lo loro, il loro percorso di studio e quello è un sogno. Non si può dimenticare del sogno fino a 20-25 anni che se hai fatto quello. Tutta la tua famiglia ovviamente ha fatto tutto l'investimento per portarti all'università. C'è gente che hanno allevato le, delle galline per prendere delle uova a vendere per pagare gli studenti, eh, le spese dello studio ai figli. E loro adesso hanno proprio interrotto il loro percorso di studio. In tante l'Università d'Italia fortuna, fortunatamente hanno aperto delle bande di con, diciamo, borse di studio, eh, borse di studio, però non è sufficiente. Sono arrivate circa 5.000. Uh, eh, possiamo chiamare rifugiati eh, dall'Afghanistan uh, qua ma più di 3.000 sono, sono veramente studenti hanno, hanno smesso il loro percorso di studio quindi se eh, stiamo parlando di un centro stiamo, stiamo parlando nell'università spero che l'università sia veramente anche un centro di potere che si possa Uh, passa parole, si possa fare questa, creare la possibilità di, di aprire più borse di studio per gli studenti eh, afghani che sono arrivati qui. Quindi sì c'è un momento di emergenziale per uh, questione di mangiare, ovviamente per trovare il posto per dormire, ma in, in più questione proprio concrete del sogno è, come diceva la ragazza, loro sono capitale della, dello Stato. Spero che poi l'indomani loro possano ritornare a casa loro possiamo aiutarli a casa loro ecco questa frase grazie okay i'll briefly uh briefly translate for uh the people who do not speak uh, italian uh our um uh, uh sorry federico we don't listen to you at home don't know what's happening again Sorry. Ah, ok. Ok. So, tri triangulation of microphones, sorry about this. Uh, so, I briefly translate for the sake of people who do not speak Italian. Uh, thank you very much, uh, I said, uh, but uh, this occasion that is very important should not on shouldn't be only for uh, discussing uh, and uh, uh, not retaining uh, anything else because we need uh, concrete uh, actions. So we need concrete actions. So Mosaico that uh, my colleague Simona uh, Tagliani was mentioning is also a possibility. He was, uh, he is uh, one of uh, the people who came uh, to Italy after the 15th of August, uh, where so many refugees came uh, uh, by the sea to escape the war. Uh, families in Afghanistan have invested uh, everything to create a future for themselves uh, here and they uh, sold everything they they had uh, using up uh, all their money to assure education for their children so uh, he finished uh, his interve intervention uh, by saying uh, i hope that the university could uh, pass uh, these uh, pieces of information on uh, and that uh, more um, uh, uh, fellowships uh, more scholarships uh, could uh, be open uh, and i have to say that personally i couldn't agree more you want to answer to him no lido is available she is okay but i think we don't have time okay. 
Any other questions or comments, also from home? Simone, I don't know if you have uh, uh, read the, mm, the chat, the messages in the chat. I can't now. Yeah, there are a lot of messages in the chat. Uh, thanks, uh, everyone, but not a specific question. Okay. Yes, we have a question here. Would you like to come here? I think we have a couple of minutes now. If we can have a little just briefly. Briefly, yes. You speak um, in English? Yeah. yeah. I will uh, I will maybe translate it to Italian if uh, no. someone okay. English is okay. Uh, so that's that question of mine. Oh. Okay. Uh my question serves only linguistic purposes. So I I wanted to ask uh, Miss uh, uh, Baraxi to translate uh, uh, or give uh, 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 let's say an some sort of uh, explanation uh, about the term uh, um, mahram. So uh, what what I have uh, understood so far is that uh, he is uh, usually I think only a man who gives uh, the the women of his family some sort of permission or uh, some uh, oh yeah sorry uh, some uh, uh, intermediary with the community some uh, people who uh, a, um, a man who uh, acts on be on behalf of a uh, law to uh, enable uh, his wife uh, his uh, daughter or uh, whoever else to do what she uh, really wants to do. So if you could just briefly explain it better or clarify it. Thank you. Thanks to being here. And uh, about uh, Mahram, I think you, you don't know what, what is the meaning of Mahram. Mahram, uh, according to the understanding of the Taliban, not all Islam, because it, we, we had some uh, female independent like Aisha, Khadija, they were uh, working, they, they, they didn't have a mahram all the time with them. But uh, uh, Taliban wanted to make limitations uh, for, Af uh, for uh, Afghan women. They announced that without mahram, you cannot go outside. It means they must have their mahram, religious mahram. Who is religious mahram? Brother, uh, husband, or father, they are religious mahram. But uh, according to the understanding, uh, they are mahram, but it is not necessary to be with us uh, uh, anytime we want to go outside. It means they are our mahram in, in uh, Islam. Brothers, husband, father. Or uh, if, uh, yeah, yeah, this is. Uh, it, yeah. uh, but there are special occasions in which you need to have them with uh, no <laughs> yeah ta taliban said uh, it is not um, according to their understanding it is uh, female or, or women are not allowed to go outside without this maram because um, they 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 think uh, they will it is it is uh, against the islam if, if a woman go outside uh, without mahram, but it is their understand. Just they want to the, to make limitations more, uh, so they they are searching some something some reason to convince the people. If we we say to the woman, you cannot go outside alone, and you must have your mahram, and it is they know it is not possible for all the female to have because some of them are some girls in Afghanistan are single. How they can have, or their father, they don't have any brothers or father. How they can go outside? Just they wanted to make some limitations. And also it was in the duration of Habibullah Kalakani. He, he, he said this like, like this, but it, it is not possible. It is not um, workable in a society that all the women have one mahram with them. Uh, if uh, it's an excuse, let's say, to, yeah, to, to, to say to, to some yeah, so okay. it is a, but according to our uh, religion, Islam, just uh, these are mahram brother, uh, husband, and father. It means uh, we can be with them, uh, like so. Uh, when we want to go outside, they said you must have uh, your mahram uh, now, they they. 
uh, didn't uh, the women are not allowed to go abroad without mahram. If they decided to go for uh, for studying in another country, they must have their brother with them. And if their brother wa don't want to doesn't want to continue the education, what will happen? It means uh, just there are some limitations they are making for the woman to uh, for uh, make uh, stay home yeah. for the female. It's uh, just, life yeah, life. yeah, yeah. It's uh, just difficulty. They, I, I say to you because they don't have knowledge to make uh, uh, policies for improvement of Afghanistan. They don't know how, what is the, the good governance for Afghanistan. Which political system is good to think about these things? So they don't have any program. They are thinking, oh, what should we do? They, according to their understanding, they make these uh, limitations or these policies or reforms. They they are thinking they are correct. But as a Afghan woman, uh, I was working outside of the home uh, in all the time, and my husband uh, uh, gave me this uh, permission to go anywhere I want alone, and there is no any issue. Uh, because I have my confidence to, to work without a man, but uh, it is uh, just uh, for 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 them acceptable, not for all the. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Shukran. Thank you. Federico. Can Thank you. Federico. Yes. Uh, I know that uh, time is over, but there is a question by Professor Faiz. I kindly ask him to open the microphone. Okay. We. We might yeah. use a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure because maybe this room is occupied. I don't, I'm not sure. But yes, please, uh, Professor. Professor Spais, may you open your microphone? He is my dean of university. He's uh, Shakofa dean at the university. Yeah, you're hearing my voice? Yes, yeah. yes, we can. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Bon, bu, buonasera, buonasera. Buonasera. Yeah. Ciao a tutti. Yeah. Good afternoon. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to organize uh, such kind of uh, nice and wonderful meetings. And I am appreciating all your efforts. At least you received one of our colleagues, Mrs. Shekute. Really, he was uh, a very uh, uh, nice researcher, and he was uh, our best colleagues in Herat University, especially in the uh, research center of Herat University, and she did a lot. But, uh, I'm appreciating her, and I'm really happy uh, to see she's here, and right now, at least, uh, her life is safe, like me. But uh, actually, I have one question because of the time. I have a question from uh, Mrs. Shekufe. What do you think, since 1919, we did not have a clear definition from human freedom? And what is the reason? Even all times, no real freedom for the woman. Since from 2001 till 2021, but during the Karzai, during the uh, President Kenny, all times the voice of a woman was raising no freedom, no freedom, and really also no freedom. But what is the important and the specific reason till now the woman's not achieved to their freedoms? What do you think, according to a woman, according to a social activist, according to a researcher? What do you think? Thank you. Thanks, Professor Faiz. Uh, Federico, can you open again your microphone so that we can listen to you? Okay. Uh, thanks, Mr. Faiz. Uh, I appreciate it that you are with me today. And um, actually, um, Mr. Faiz was uh, the head of uh, our university, Herat University. Um, he was a, he has a patriotic person and he didn't he, he never wants want to, to make some limitation for the female we were free in 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 the, in the workplace and we had many facilities uh, in in our workplace at herat university but uh, if i i want to answer your question you know the society the afghanistan society because uh, as uh, i said before from 19 uh, before 1919, there were uh, no rights for women. They didn't. They used to be at home. They work at home, and they never went outside. 
But after that, when they know their uh, right by the efforts of uh, King Amanullah, they know that uh, they are a part of the society. They must uh, be involved in all uh, aspects of the society. They have their right. Uh, and uh, they try to achieve their dreams, but uh, uh, another side of the society was the men. They never wanted to uh, accept this situation because traditionally they, they heard from their parents that uh, men, uh, women should be uh, work at home. For example, uh, as uh, Mr. Fayez know, know better than me, because, uh, because um, he has uh, more than me experience of uh, living in Afghanistan, our society is a traditional society, and it is a, uh, the culture is not like Europe, that uh, all beef, um, has equal rights. Before that, uh, when the women didn't have uh, knowledge of uh, their rights, so they were uh, at home, they used to be like this. But after they know what is their uh, right, uh, they started to fight against the limitation. Uh, but uh, another side was the men. They didn't want to uh, allow their family members to uh, continue their education. Even uh, in my family, my family was an educated family. And all of them know that uh, education is so important for the um, development of Afghanistan and also our family. Our, my family members are doctors and uh, uh, um, they, they are educated. But when I tried to go to um, uh, Kabul for my master degree, I was single at that time. Because of the society, my family uh, said, you cannot go Kabul alone. Not all members, but one of my brothers was thinking, if I go to Kabul uh, for my education to continue my master's degree, maybe people will uh, talk against us. Maybe they will think um, uh, their daughter uh, go to Kabul without um, mahram or um, like this. It means sometimes society makes some limitation for the woman, so they try to raise their voice, and uh, it was continuously, even in duration of uh, Karzai Ashraf Ghani in the two decades, democracy in past decades, because uh, it was a culture that the, all the high position should be for men, so women were against this, because if they are educated person like uh, women, like men, why they cannot achieve their uh, rights? Even in, in Europe, I see this culture. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Uh, all the high, higher positions are for men, and the low positions are for women. Yeah. It is from the past. It, it means historically, the mind of people accepted this, that um, women should be... Um, in lower uh, positions or uh, some, uh, they must have some limitations um, and uh, the, the society was like this. So women, Afghan women uh, are so strong, they are educated, they, 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 they couldn't be silent against this uh, kind of uh, limitation or uh, an opportunity society. So if uh, I understand, I, I can answer the question, but uh, Mr. Faiz knows uh, the situation better than me, what is going on uh, in Afghanistan, even before the Taliban, there were some limitations for us. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Shakofa, and thank you very much, uh, Professor pa Paidi. Sorry, I can't see. Faiz. Faiz, uh, Professor Faiz, uh, for contributing uh, to our discussion. Uh, uh, I think time is really over, although there are many other questions and uh, I think curiosities, uh, but uh, uh, Shakopa will be with us uh, for some time. So I think this is uh, uh, just the first uh, uh, event, the first possibility that uh, uh, she has shared, uh, uh, during which she has shared uh, her, her, her experience, but uh, she's also a researcher, of course. She's in, uh, uh, importantly, a researcher, and uh, we have uh, really to thank uh, all uh, the speakers today, Shakofa, her colleagues, uh, and Simona for organizing everything, uh, uh, because we, I think we should really look up uh, at those uh, women or human beings uh, as uh, role models of courage and determination. So please, before finishing, join me in a final round of applause for Shakofa and all the contributors to show our gratitude. Thank you very much. Bravo.
Thank you very much, everybody, for being here and uh, to show uh, your gratitude to Shakofa and uh, her colleagues. Uh, goodbye. Good night. Thanks, Shakofa. Thanks, everyone. And bye. See you soon. And, uh, Very soon, everybody. Bye. Yes. Grazie, Simona. Grazie di tutto e arrivederci. Thanks, A presto. Okay. Ciao. Buona giornata. Ciao, ciao. Oh. Thank <laughs> you.